of serving to change lives. Using his profile and platform, Brennan gives back. Brennan supports our country's troops and veterans. On his car, he and his team honored Sergeant First Class Nathan Ross Chapman from the First Special Forces Group, who on January 4th, 2002, became the first soldier killed in combat war in Afghanistan. Brennan and his sponsor have donated significant money to veterans organizations in the greater Houston area. In 2020, in the All-Star Race in Bristol, Brennan honored Remember Everyone Deployed with the color of his car and the matching logo as a reminder of those who are away fighting for our freedom. When Hurricane Harvey took its tour of Texas in 2017, Brennan reached out to the Houston Food Bank to see what he could do to help. Since then, Brennan and his girlfriend, Lindsay, have been working to build food drives, volunteer and donate back to the food banks in both Charlotte and Houston. During the pandemic, Brennan continued his work focusing on the need for food. In 2020, Brennan donated a significant portion of his salary to the Houston Food Bank. It sure sounds to me like Brennan and Lindsay should be in Rotary. Let's give a warm Rotary Lone Star Pets welcome to Brennan the Bull Pool. Hey guys, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, it's really fun to, to catch up. I know we got to talk last year a little bit, so um, I'm, I'm excited uh, to be here and to, and to catch up and, and um, talk a little bit about what's been going on. And, and uh, so thanks, thanks for having me again. It's just awesome that, um, you know, to be able to be with a group of people like everyone here, you know, to, to come together to, to uh, work to, to help others. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty neat. So thanks for having me be a part of it. Is that so uh, this is your time. Go ahead and start. Okay. Talking. Okay. I didn't know. No I worries. didn't know if you guys were going to go and talk to like ask questions and stuff like last time or not. So I'm sorry, but yeah. So um, we have done a, a bunch of uh, charity stuff in Houston area. That's one of the biggest things um, for, for me and Lindsay with the race team is, um, you know, supporting the Houston food bank. So uh, we were able to um, donate, I, I think it was um, almost a quarter. I think it was, uh, almost a quarter of a million meals. I'm, I can't remember the exact um, figure, but we did uh, do that, which was really, really special. And with my sponsor as well, last year was Spartan Mosquito. And I know all you guys in Houston and probably in Texas know how terrible the <laughs> mosquitoes are. Um, so we gave away a bunch of product that actually um, helps, um, you know, keep mosquitoes away. It does a really good job. So we were able to do that and give them, give away so much mosquito product and give it to, to, all the VFWs around um, the Houston area. So that was really cool. Um, and and uh, it was fun to be able to um, support, you know, the city that I'm from, you know, I grew up in, in Houston in the Woodlands area. Um, so for me, the, that's, that's uh, home and, and just was really special to be able to, to help out and to learn um, the difficulties, uh, how much COVID affected uh, everything. And the, the reason why we do so much work with the food banks is because it really is like the most direct um, charity to the people. So when you, um, you know, donate meals, it gets to the people quickly. So um, that's one reason why, um, you know, we, we push the food banks and stuff in a lot of the areas and communities that we work with. Um, but also um, last year, you know, we, we did do a lot of stuff with the veterans. Of course, the COVID stuff kind of affected some, some things because we were unable to have them um, out at the racetrack um, as the year went on. So, um, but we did, we would uh, bring in um, veterans and their families to the racetrack. Um, we were able to do uh, one race this year towards the end of the end of the 2020 season. We actually had um, um, the veterans and their families come to the race in a suite. And we had, um, you know, almost like a little uh, coming home party for them and uh, where we had meals and food and they got to get together with their families for the first time and also um, see the race. So. Uh, we were able to do that, which was really, which is really cool and stuff that we definitely want to do more of in, in the future. Um, and so we do a lot of stuff um, with Remember Everybody Deployed, which um, is a charity that um, focuses on um, our deployed military members and their families. And so while they're away, um, trying to 
um, make meals, make game nights and movie nights for um, their wives and husbands and children and things while they're gone. And then of course, trying to throw um, an event when they return um, and just try to uh, make them feel as supportive as possible um, you know, during that time. So that's been sort of a humbling experience for me. Uh, that was a, the, this past year was the first year that I, I really got to do a lot of veteran uh, work. And so um, just to kind of go through um, some of those experiences with the families and hear from them and talk to the, to the military members um, really uh, sort of changes your perspective on, on a lot of things. And um, you, you tend to forget that there are people uh, out there, um, you know, fighting for your freedom uh, during this time. You kind of forget about it. So, um, so for me, that was uh, super, super humbling and, and uh, was a good experience. And, and also last year, we did a lot of stuff too. I, we had a, um, a deal that we called uh, Brennan's Miracle Miles. And uh, for every um, mile that I completed in, in um, uh, the Los Angeles race, uh, we donated um, money back um, to the hospitals there um, in the Los Angeles area um, to help uh, with children, children's um, cancer patients. So what we did is we had um, all these kids. It was so much fun. It was so cool. We had all these kids uh, submit drawings and uh, we actually took their drawings that they actually drew and put them on the race car. So we had um, cars that had slices of pizza and, um, you know, Godzilla's fighting squids and all kinds of crazy stuff all over the car, which is really cool. And um, it was actually very successful and, and was good. We got to go and hang out with some kids. We had a couple of kids at the racetrack um, because this was all before all the COVID stuff broke, broke out. So that was a, a lot of fun. And um, it was super neat to just um, get to have those experiences uh, with those kids and be able to, to help donate. So all that stuff um, this past year has been really fun. And these are all stuff that we're trying to continue on in, in uh, 2021 as well. Um, of course, it's been a challenging year. It's been challenging um, for everyone. It's been challenging to raise money for racing as well as raise money for these charities to help fund programs that we're trying to put together to help people. So. Um, you know, if you guys uh, have anybody that are, are interested in wanting to get involved and trying to trying to help use the platform of, of, of NASCAR and racing, you know, please um, let us know. It's definitely um, something to, to have a conversation about and, and um, see, see if we can't get something uh, done good to, to help others. So I know um, that there's going to be lots of people that are going to ask for <laughs> For your number on that let yeah. me ask you a question real quick just okay. let's go back to your nas first of all thank you for all you do uh for the community and for the world seriously uh we need more people like you out in the world uh about your nascar driving because that takes a lot of fearlessness i mean to get <laughs> to get in the car and drive that fast i would love to do it but i would be i'd be scared to do it uh what are some of the techniques that you've used as a as a nascar driver to face your fears because we have a lot of leaders on this call that are going into some uncertain times, you know, and trying to lead an organization during uncertain times. And I think fear is gonna be coming up at times. So talk to us for a little bit about maybe some of your processes and your history with all that. Well, definitely, um, you know, as far as driving the race car goes on the fear level, I think it's just something that, um, you know, for me, I love to do it so much that um, you just kind of forget about it in a way, but I, I, I'm, what, what's interesting to think about though, for me as a driver is I'm, I'm the leader of, of my team, basically. Um, I'm the guy, right? I'm the quarterback. So it's um, those guys and those team members are looking at me to make the right decisions and make the right calls and lead them in the right directions, whether it's, um, you know, adjustments that need to be done on the car or um, adjustments we need to make back at the shop in order to make things run smoother or better. And, um, you know, for, for a long time, you know, I always thought that that sort of thing was for for the crew chiefs or other owners of the team or whatever, and and I and I looked at it wrong. But as the years went on, you know, I started to understand that, um, you know, I'm sort of that guy that has to make those decisions, and it's tough at times, and it's uh, it's extremely scary, especially in new environments more so than in environments with people that you're comfortable with, um, and so for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian guy. I have a lot of faith. I think that's what's led me to this point in my career now. And so it takes an, a tremendous amount of faith, in my opinion, to be a leader. And you have to have that faith in order to make those difficult decisions that, um, you know, you're making the right choice. And, and I don't think anything ever takes that fear away. I think um, you, it's just about having that confidence in yourself and your abilities to make good decisions. And um, 
be able to motivate your people um, in the right way that leads them in the right direction that, that you know puts everybody down the path for success. And it's a very difficult thing to do. It's challenging. Um, you know, for me, I always try to be funny and silly and joke and um, you know try to bring that type of um, fun into it uh, at the, to kind of loosen everybody up and and then sort of kind of get to get to the point and get to my points across on um, what we need to accomplish and what we need to get done. And I find um, that trying to make things a little bit more fun ultimately leads to more success and, and um, you know, trying to make people, um, you know, that trust and earning that trust um, is, um, it's challenging, but it's also a key part of it. And, and uh, when, whenever you have a group of people or a team that uh, trusts in you, um, not every decision you make is gonna be the right one, um, but you'll make right decisions and, um, you know, you'll, you'll lead your people in the, in the right direction. And if you can have that confidence in yourself to, um, make those difficult decisions, um, I think, um, for me, at least I've been able to find success doing it that way through a lot of ups and downs. I've made, I've learned the hard way. Um, you know, I've made some, some bad decisions. Everybody does. So that's how you learn. And you just take, um, you know, take your notes, learn from it. And, um, you know, try to move on to the next decision and uh, try to not dwell on the ones that didn't work out for you in the past. Yeah, and keeping that Good positive. evening, Brennan. This is Corbett Parker. We uh, got to meet and, uh, when you spoke to the Rotary Club of Houston Skyline last year. Thank you very much for coming back. These are the all-stars of Rotary um, across our region down here. And so we're, we're so thankful that you um, were willing to invest your time in Rotary. And I agree, you'd make a great Rotarian one day. And I'll certainly be following up with Lindsay and you. But specifically to building that trust, 200 miles an hour, you have to make sure not just that your sponsor logo was put on correctly and money's in the bank, but that, you know, the axle's been checked, the tire, you know, nut is on there. What is some advice you have for Rotarians that can't pay people, they can't put them in the limelight like you do, but are relying on volunteers to literally go out and save the world. What have you found has been a kind of some successful mechanisms for building up that trust and in, and just building that team, um, you know, that's willing to stand behind you? Because a lot of the people on this call, presidents and district governors, they're tasked with leading. They're going to get the limelight, just like you get the limelight. How do you help those that are, uh, you know, putting you in that position to feel like they're in the limelight too? Well, I mean, it's an interesting question for sure. And I definitely see what you're saying. I, I think, um, you know, for me as a team, like I, I don't ever try to, you know, put myself as the person in the limelight. It's, we, we win together as a team and lose together as a team. And, and um, you know, with volunteers, it's the same way. If you, you can't um, have somebody um, not do something correctly or, or, or whatever it may be, you know, the whole thing crumbles. So I think, um, you just have to make sure that everybody um, that you're working with believes in the same goal and believes in what you're trying to accomplish. So I think um, having that goal set out very clear across the board to the volunteers on what um, you're trying to, what your overall goals are and what you're trying to accomplish um, through the event or charity or whatever it is that you're trying to, to do and, and make sure they also believe in that goal and see that um, that how that change is going to affect so many people and um, really being able to um, drive that home. I mean, for me, I think that's what's worked in, in a lot of volunteer situations that I've been in um, and, and um, been the guy in the back, um, you know, uh, marking out uh, barcodes and throwing stuff into boxes and things like that. It's just, um, you know, I, I think it's just about getting everybody on the same page and believing in, in, uh, in the goal and what the change is that you're trying to make. Um, and if you're able to do that, I think, you know, you'll have success. I mean, I think people are much more willing to work for the overall goal and the overall success of the project to see it come through for the change that it's going to affect so many different people and so many lives um, than just trying to have a second in the, in the limelight. You know, otherwise, I don't think that they would be, be volunteering um, and doing their time if they weren't really in it to, to change and affect change in, in other people. Uh, I have a question for you about uh, in your bio, it was mentioned that you are sort of a social uh, media influencer now, which I know, yeah, you know, they say that I don't, I don't, I still don't feel like yeah. that's true, but yeah. <laughs> but what, any tips, any uh, from being on the ground doing, using the, the platforms to get the job done and to get the word out, 
what are some of the top tips that you would give these leaders on the call on how to use social media, especially your favorite platforms to yeah. get synergy and get, get things going logistically? I think the most important thing with social media is that there are so many people like, yes, you have to have certain points and things you want to get across and you need to have it scripted in a, in a way, but to some extent, a lot of the mistakes that I see or that it's just done, it's too scripted. It's not, it doesn't feel natural and it doesn't come up. It just ends up not coming across well. So I think you, for me, what I do, what works for me is I just have uh, bullet points of the points that I want to get across the goals that I have that I want to get across, across my social media platforms, um, and then try to um, incorporate it, those points and things that I want to get out to my followers um, in the most natural way possible um, through, you know, spending time with my, my other friends or other drivers or other team members and try to fit it in as natural as possible. Um, and I know that's a difficult thing to do. Um, you definitely have to practice. Um, you know, I, I practice all the time, whether I'm in the shower or I'm like getting ready and I'm talking into the mirror and it feels goofy as heck. And it's just something, something my dad made me do a long time ago. And it's helped me, it helps me even with just like normal meetings and things like that. You just, you know what you want to get across and, um, and then you just practice it. And, and even though it may be scripted, some of it may be scripted to, to a sense, you still, the way that you've said it and practice it, it'll just come out so much more natural. Um, over your phone, over your Instagram story, your posts, whether you're making TikToks or even YouTube videos. Um, and then I think too, um, if you are making, shooting a video, um, try to be super excited. It may feel like you're being way overdoing it, but it doesn't come across on the camera that way. And I see, you know, a lot of people, they're excited and they're doing a good job and what they're, they're speaking clearly and well, but if the excitement was up more, it just comes across better and gets more engagement and gets more people to pay attention to what you're saying and what you have to say. Um, and I think that is super important as far as like just drawing an audience in um, through your social media. But I think too, just um, try to do things that are fun and silly. I think um, a lot of times, you know, if, if something sounds a little too outrageous or sounds a little crazy, um, you might be going in the right direction. I mean, it can't be too crazy, but um, you know, if you're like, oh man, that seems a little funny. I don't know if we should do that that way. Uh, maybe think about it some more and bring it up with some of your other um, the other people that you work with and see what they think about it. And maybe it's an idea that you can fine tune into something really great. That that thing that just pulls more people in or pulls more volunteers in or or helps you get more funding or or helps people donate more. Um, you know, there's a lot of fun ways I think and ideas you can come up with um, that way that might you might have them written down somewhere or might, you might have been put that one away. I don't want anybody to see that idea. I don't know. But sometimes those ideas are, are the best ones that, that ultimately end up, um, you know, bringing, bringing more people in. And I love how essentially what you're saying is authenticity. That's yeah. what people are hungry for. We always talk in Rotary and in the corporate world about the why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Share that, showcase that, and yeah. make those videos short and to the point and yes. exciting to grab that attention. Thank you for that. <laughs> You mentioned a second ago, we only have a few more minutes and we really appreciate you taking the time to yeah. be with us tonight. You mentioned uh, partnerships with NASCAR, essentially getting NASCAR yeah. drivers involved and getting more people involved from NASCAR in local projects and helping the community. Uh, can you elaborate just a little bit about where you see that and how people can get involved with stuff like uh, partnerships like that? Yeah, well, there's a lot of racetracks all over the country. So for me, what I've been trying to do um, on the veteran side of things uh, is just where there are racetracks located that we go and race, which they're all over the country. You know, we race in California all, all the way up to New Hampshire. I mean, down in Florida to, to Chicago, right? So we're, we, we're, we reached, we're pretty spread out across the country. So my goal is to try and um, be able to work with the VFWs and um, work with the veteran organizations near these racetracks um, to help um, bring families together and show them show them support and help them out in, in I mean a bunch of different ways you know but um, so that's kind of been you know my angle through that and we're trying to do the same similar things um, with the children's hospitals as well you know and trying to put programs around you know if we complete so many miles or so many laps uh, in, a, in an event that you know the that um, companies and partners and sponsors of myself will um, donate money back um, to help 
these facilities out. So we're trying to go at it that way. NASCAR is obviously extremely helpful with um, charitable, charitable efforts as well. They have a big veteran program and things like that also that they're working on. So um, there, there's a lot of ways that you can get involved. Um, and, and of course, there are ways to do it where if there's not a racetrack around, um, you know, we, we certainly love to come in and, you know, bring a race car and, um, you know, donate, give, give out stuff, whether it's through the sponsors or partners or food banks and things like that, and um, spend volunteering for a day and just try to uh, pull people in to see how um, important it is to help um, and, and work in, in your community. And, and um, I think there's just um, what's so great about NASCAR is the fan base is so loyal. Um, and, and when you start a program in the sport and you get involved, um, you tend to get a lot of help through the fan base as well because they see how important it is. And that NASCAR community is there itself, its own tight grip community, and they help their own too, right? So um, for me, I, I feel like it's just an awesome platform um, to uh, not only just get help from other partners and other people involved in the sport, but the fan base too is really huge. And they uh, really care to, to help out the, the other groups and other communities and things involved in the sport. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you again for being with us tonight and sharing a little bit of your world with us. And uh, I've met a lot of people, athletes, people in the entertainment world, uh, and you truly are one of a kind. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of the community, help the community out and doing good with your platform. And I look forward to uh, following up with you at some point and helping you out in any way. And, and maybe we can have a big old NASCAR rotary event somewhere in Texas soon. I'm not kidding. We'll make it happen. Yeah, uh, also no, that, just to honor, go ahead. Say that. Sorry. I was going to say, no, that would be awesome. That would be fantastic. And, and no, I just appreciate you guys having me on and it's awesome to um, see a group like this and, and how you guys want to help um, other people. Um, I think it's, I think that's special. So I didn't, I didn't know that something like this had existed until last year. So um, no, I just think it's it's really neat. So I just appreciate you guys having me on to talk and tell you guys what I've been up to. So well, I thank you. It. And I think Michelle's going to make you a member soon. So we'll make that. Okay. <laughs> we'll get that going. <laughs> but, uh, and and awesome. by the way, to honor your time, we will be making a donation in your honor, in your name to the Rotary Foundation for being with us tonight. So thank you well, again awesome. for all thank you do. You and uh, we wish you all the best ahead. And I'm going to come watch the race sometime. I've always yeah, ab absolutely. We'll get uh, everybody in Texas who wants to go to the Texas race. We'll figure it out. <laughs> That's right. Well, hey, thanks a lot. Good to see yeah, you. Yeah, thank you guys. Bye.